Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be a Yu-Gi-Oh! discussion video, and this time it's going to be on a topic that I've actually had in my head for a little while now, so I figured why not, you know, just put it into a video form, put it out there, see what you guys think about it, and get some feedback on it, and maybe discuss it a bit with you guys in the comments down below. But basically, as the title says, this video is going to be on the Danger archetype and how I personally feel like they are severely crippling and basically could possibly ruin the future of Yu-Gi-Oh! card design in terms of how cards have to be planned around the Danger archetype going forward. Basically, a lot of my concerns stem from the success the Danger deck has already had, as well as things that we've seen in the past in terms of cards that have been hit on Forbidden Limited lists and stuff like that, specifically because they curbed what Konami could do in terms of future card design. They were very limiting in terms of them existing in the game made it hard for Konami to print cards the way they wanted to print them. So, we have an entire archetype of these danger cards, and we only have half of them out to us right now. We only have eight monsters, two spells, and two traps out of two support waves from two core sets, and we're actually going to be getting more. We're going to be getting double what we currently have. At least that's what we project to be seen. It's what we pro what's what we expect to get, essentially. We expect to be getting at least, you know, around eight more new danger monsters. If even half of them have good discard effects, then they'll be really good for the deck itself. And then possibly two other spells and two other traps. And if those have good effects, then those will also be defining for the archetype moving forward. But so why is this archetype so scary to me in terms of this entire archetype being a really big plague on Yu-Gi-Oh's future card design and what Kanabi can get away with in terms of future card design? Well, basically, I'm scared because we only have half of the Danger support and it's already arguably the best deck of the current format. Danger Dark World FTK is an incredibly powerful deck and it's very, very much doing better and better every single week that it's around. And even if you remove the FTK element from the deck, it's still a very good deck at doing any sort of first turn board with Tomahawk. You can do things like Extra Link, Gumblar for four, do stuff like that without the FTK. And then when you're going second, because of the deck's built-in engine tools like Bigfoot and Thunderbird and then Graffa, you have a very, very good you know, procedure of going second against almost any deck. You just start putting cards onto the board, gaining pluses from your danger effects and all that sort of stuff. So it's already an incredibly strong deck, and we already have enough of the support to build a full deck out of it that could be the best deck, but we still have half of the support yet to get. So that in itself is already pretty scary. It's kind of like the BA thing where Burning Abyss only had two of its support waves and was only going to get better as time went on with additional cards like Libic and Farfa and stuff like that being thrown in, eventually Beatrice and all that sort of stuff, and then other archetypes that synergize with it. But after New Challengers came out, which was BA's second support wave, the deck very rapidly became the best deck because of how good the quality of cards were in that deck. And that's definitely not the only comparison we're going to be making to BA during this video. The entire Danger archetype is very, very reminiscent of Burning Abyss, not only from the effects that a few of the cards share, in terms of like Nessie, Chupacabra, and Jackalope essentially being Skarm, Seer, and Graph clones, but we also have the, you know, almost unique trait of this archetype of every single card in your hand that is a danger monster, is immediately playable. Now there are some RNG elements involved which didn't exist with Burning Abyss monsters, but every danger monster can be summoned from your hand for free and is instantly playable at a moment's notice, very similarly to how Burning Abyss monsters operate. A handful of Burning Abyss monsters is a handful of monsters that can special summon themselves, and that's what made that deck really good. The thing that sort of held that deck into its own little, you know, bubble was the fact that all the Burning Abyss monsters had those restrictions on them of you had to have no spells and traps to special them, and they died if you had any non-Burning Abyss monster on the field. The deck could still work around that, obviously, but it was a huge limiting factor of what kept the deck from literally being splashed in everything. Now, when you look at Danger, that has none of those restrictions. It doesn't matter how many spells and traps you control. It doesn't matter what's on your field in any capacity. As long as you have Danger monsters to summon from your hand and cards to discard, you can summon them, and they have no built-in restriction of killing themselves like the Burning Abyss monsters do. It's a very, very interesting scenario, like looking at these cards and seeing just how generically good they were 
were designed in terms of being very powerful. Not good design in terms of really healthy cards. I mean good design as in these cards are borderline broken in a vacuum. So what that brings us to is that these cards are going to have a massive amount of staying power in Yu-Gi-Oh! At least in, from a theoretical standpoint. These cards rotate themselves around like Burning Abyss cards do basically almost identically because the effects are almost identical and then by the nature of you summoning them from hand they also replace themselves by drawing cards meaning you're digging into more of them you're digging into other cards and all that other sort of stuff it also just happens to be one of the best supported archetypes in terms of attribute in the game because it, it's dark which means you get allure you get beginning of the end you get all these good dark support cards so basically the deck has a lot of really really strong attributes going for it going into the future. Konami is going to have to work very hard to deal with these cards on subsequent Forbidden and Limited lists down the line because I see no way that when Danger gets all of its full support it's not the best deck or an engine in the best deck going forward because of how generic the cards are. So that's a problem that's going to have to be addressed on Forbidden and Limited lists. But so the problem I see going forward is that with the Danger's existence and because of how many monsters and spells and traps there are going to be, you can't theoretically hit all of them. You can't ban all of them. We have eight monsters now, we're getting about eight more, which means there will be 16 total monsters. We're getting more spells and traps. This archetype is going to have way too many members to potentially hit all of them on Forbidden Limited lists. Could they do that? Yes. They could just have an entire ban list section that's like 15 danger monsters. Definitely something that could happen in the future, but it's Konami. They probably will not do something like that just because of the scope of people's investments and, like, comfort with the company. They would just be ripping away from people. Like, if they banned an entire TCG exclusive archetype after it came out in the OCG or whatever. And that's another thing. It comes out in the OCG. So, like, <laughs> we've got to have to deal with it. We're going to have to deal with these cards for at least a little while in terms of, like, keeping the cards around before people start getting scared about bans, right? As long as these cards are in the game in any capacity, it severely limits what Konami can do with future card design, though. And this is something that we can look at on the Forbidden and Limited list of cards that are already banned because they limited future card design. And that's what's kind of scary here is because those were individual cards that could be hit. This is an entire archetype, which is going to be significantly harder to justify outright banning or limiting or hitting every single card in the archetype to make it fair to any sort of new designed cards. So that brings me to the main point of this video. If Konami is going to print any more cards that have effects when they hit the graveyard, those are going to be some of the best cards to use in a danger deck. It's not going to be something like any it's usable in its own deck or whatever it's just going to be one of the best danger discards we already see that with dark worlds with some shadals with burning abyss monsters cards that were already established to be good as discard fodder in the past are already being used and they're being used well cards that were outdated for literally years shadals haven't really been playable on top tier event basis since 2014 Dark Worlds hasn't really been any sort of meta-defining deck since 2012. These cards are making a comeback because of how good they synergize with dangers, and that sets a very strange precedent going forward with what Konami can get away with in terms of designing cards that have effects either in the grave or that trigger when they hit the grave, whether they're discarded or whether they just are in the grave naturally, like cards like Fairy Tale Snow or whatever. There's a lot of cards that they just cannot justify printing anymore while danger exists because the natural way the danger deck operates would abuse the way those cards are played and they would be abused in ways that were not intended in Konami's designing of the card. Take this as an example. Say tomorrow Konami announced a new Shadal monster, a main deck monster, that's effect was when this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect, you can special summon a fusion monster from like either player's graveyard or something like that. You know, something that would be really good in a Shadal deck. Now, that becomes really good danger support because if the danger deck plays any sort of things like instant fusion to extend or whatever, it's very, very much something that can be abused. Similarly, any cards that discard cards become very good danger support. That's sort of a problem here. We've never really seen an archetype in the past 
that got their effects no matter how they were discarded. We've always had things like Dark Worlds that had to be discarded by card effect but couldn't be discarded by cost. We had things like Mermails that had to be discarded as cost to activate a water monster's effect. We had things like Burning Abyss, which is sort of the closest thing to danger, as has already been established, where they would get their effects no matter how they hit the grave, but they had the built-in restriction of all that sort of nonsense of killing themselves when there's no BAs on the field. So they had that restriction built in, so they weren't really abusable. You have Shadals that have to be sent to the graveyard by card effect, can't be discarded as cost. That goes out the window with dangers, and every single danger monster that has a good discard effect, like Nessie, Snake, Mothman, Jackalope, Chupacabra, hell, even Bigfoot and Thunderbird are good in some capacity because they're really good against breaking boards. When you have these cards in the format, Suddenly, you can't get away with printing a card like Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, Nightmare Cerberus anymore because those cards are going to be good in a danger deck because they just discard a card for free. Any card that gets printed in the future that has any sort of discarding a card from your hand element is going to be a very, very powerful danger support card. Let's take, for example, Konami likes to print a lot of uh, the anime cards that never got printed as of recently. We saw it with Card of Demise, with the Cyber Angel cards, all that sort of stuff. They really like supporting cards that never came out from the anime. There's a Dark World support card that was in the anime, NGX, that never got printed. It's called Dark Corridor. It's always treated as a Dark World card, and its effect is add one Dark World monster from your deck to your hand, and then discard one card. So it's literally Rota for Dark Worlds. Like, if you were to use it nowadays, before Dangers came out, you would literally just activate it, add Snow to your hand, discard Snow, and then Snow searches whatever you want. It would add a consistency boost to the Dark World deck. To the Dark World deck just the Dark World deck. You'd have like weird Dark World hybrids, but those would be things that aren't nearly as powerful in a vacuum as dangers are. Now if that card was to be printed, it would be add Snow or add Graffa or add Brow to your hand, which are already good in a danger deck because they're just like the best discard cards, and then discard a danger like Nessie or whatever and just start setting up your hand full of dangers to just special summon for free and you would do something like add brow or add snow so like that's really good discard fodder for the dangers as well it serves a dual purpose you would literally be like activate corridor add snow to hand discard nessie nessie searches a danger monster reveal that danger monster hit the snow out of your hand now you've drawn a card and searched a card there are cards like that that we can't get anymore as long as good dangers exist in the game it's just something that I have a just a little itchy feeling in my head about because it's it's severely limiting, right? Konami can't print any more good Shadal cards that revolve around discarding because they will just be abused by danger monsters. If they're good and generic, they will be abused by danger monsters discards. They can't print any new good graveyard effects because if it's a really, really good graveyard effect, it will be discarded by a danger monster summoning itself and be abused in a way that was not as intended. A card cannot have a generic discard effect to discard a card in any capacity to do anything remotely to going one for one or plussing because that is going to be abused with the danger cards because the danger cards trigger no matter how they go to the grave. These cards are very, very poorly designed in the aspect of they just happen no matter what. They just happen. The way that they play themselves from hand replaces themselves. You, the only thing that is badly designed about the archetype in terms of not being super, super broken is the RNG element. And that's like already, you know, arguably, arguably bad in its own right because you should be trying to remove RNG from a card game so that it's more skill based, not luck based, but instead you're adding more luck into the equation. But that could be a topic for a completely separate video. How danger is literally the get lucky, get good archetype in most cases. But so Konami cannot do nearly as many things as openly as they could do in the past. Before Dangers came out, they could print the Nightmare cards. Those cards were perfectly fine to print. You had to play cards like Phoenix Blade to be free discards or stuff like that just to make those super impactful around Nationals format. But as of right now, literally this format, there is a Goki deck, the Dark Goki deck, 
that is playing danger monsters like Snake, Jackalope, and Nessie because you can discard those off the Nightmares and Aqua Dolphin while you're doing your combo, and they plus you more than just discarding Phoenix Blade does. So, like, it's a really weird situation that we found ourselves in with these danger cards, and it could only potentially get worse because we're getting we're getting eight more of these fucking monsters and if at least four of them are good with their discard effects well fuck we're just gonna have a problem right that's just am i am i crazy in thinking this is basically what i want to ask you is i crazy in thinking this because we can look at the forbidden and limited list right we have Constellar uh, Ptolemaeus, whatever the fucking whatever that card's text like technical name is right that card got banned because it limited the future of Xyz Monster card design. Any rank 5 Xyz Monster or higher, I can't remember its exact effect, any, basically, any high rank Xyz Monster that's intended to be summoned with like 2 level 5s or whatever, or like Cyber Dragon Infinity is like the biggest textbook example, any monster that's intended to be summoned in like a dedicated deck, like Cyber Dragon Nova into Infinity, just gets turned into a generic rank 4 with Tall Mass, so that card got banned. El Shadal Construct, got banned in the TCG, it's currently unbanned in the OCG because it's not nearly as big a problem because of Master Rule 4, but it got banned because one, it's a very oppressive card, but another reason is simply because Construct's existence with El Sh with, uh, with Shadal Fusion was very limiting on the future of card design. When Construct came out, there was not any good light monsters to send from your deck to the graveyard and get an effect from to summon it. That's almost like factored into Construct's effect because Construct can send a Shadal from your deck to the graveyard to sort of compensate, right? So you'd Shadal fusion from deck or from your hand, you'd get a Shadal monster effect, and then the Construct would trigger another Shadal for you just to sort of make up the fact that it seemed like Konami knew there were no good lights in the game to send to the graveyard for a fusion summon. Then you fast forward a year to 2015, Clown monsters come out, Damage Juggler and Trick Clown, and it becomes very apparent that Construct cannot allow any more good light monsters to be broken just because of Shadal Fusion and its existence. So the card gets banned. It got banned because it's a very strong card, but it also was limiting card design because they couldn't print any more cards like the Perform Ages, like Trick Clown or Damage Juggler, with Construct and Shadal Fusion running around in a pre-Master Rule 4 environment where you had free reign of the extra deck onto your field. Now it's a bit more controlled because we have Link Summoning mechanic requirements, so that sort of mitigated itself a little bit. There are multiple other cards on the ban list that can be looked at and, you know, you could just say they're on there because they did limit future card design. Those cards are either still on the ban list or have come off the ban list with an errata. Future Fusion was one of those cards. Future Fusion was really broken around the time it got banned in 2012, but it was also banned because it limited card design. You basically had cards that could not be printed or were printed and broke a card, so it basically had to be dealt with because it would be a problem in the future. And that was sort of what we had going on for a while with a bunch of the cards on the Forbidden and Limited list, like at least a handful of them, like a dozen of them. Basically, the gist of this video before it gets way too long is that I believe that the Danger archetype is way too good in terms of what it was designed to be used as and used for. It could have easily been relegated and like sort of self-contained in that all of the Danger monsters could have had their effects say when this card is discarded by a danger monster effect you can get the effect that would have sort of preemptively prevented any of these problems but no instead these cards are all very super generic and in my mind's eye as long as cards like jackalope chupacabra nessie uh, any of these cards exist at copies of more than one it's going to be a huge problem for future card design and cards that we currently have because they are abusable in their current form. That's why Danger Dark World FTK is arguably the best deck. It had the most results from London in a territory that doesn't have Summon Sorceress, which that deck only gets better with Summon Sorceress in the TCG. So I wanna know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, as usual, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Or at least, I think it's awesome. I think it's cool. I'm able to just, like, impart my knowledge of the game into videos, whether it be combo tutorials and discussions and all that sort of stuff. And I do like to engage 
with my audience. I want to know what your thoughts are on this topic in the comments down below. But other than that, links are in the description to my Twitch page and my Discord server for the channel. If you want to chat with me and some others on a daily basis, the Discord link will be of use to you. And if you want to catch my frequent streams, the Twitch link is something you might want to go to and follow that to get notified next time I go live. But like I said, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you got this far into the video, give me a hashtag danger in the comments down below. But as I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. Let me know your thoughts and take care. I'll see you in the next video.